in the introduction of this topic, we are supposed to know the electrical energy uh, as many uses. And in this case, our concern is the electrical energy. The electrical energy has many uses in our day-to-day -day life because we use in lighting the bulbs at our home. We use in heat energy. Some people use electricity to cook, to boil water, to heat the room when it is coal. We also use it to operate different home appliances like the TV. We use it for the TV, for the laptop, for phones. So it means that it has many uses this electricity that we are learning. So it's the electrical energy that we are learning about. How does it, how does it work? The electrical energy. Now, our first objective was to understand a simple circuit. A simple circuit comprises of connecting wires, a bulb, a cell, a switch. Now, when we have these components, we can connect and form a circuit. So what we are having there is what is this. So when a wire it's this a wire. It is represented by a straight line. Then this is a cell, one cell. This is a bulb. Remember, a bulb sometimes is drawn as this. It can be called a bulb or a lamp. And this is a switch. Now, when we connect these components, using a straight line that represents wires. So these are copper wire, any, any conductor. So this is, so you connect a cell. Let me just connect for you to see. Now, once you have those components, this is the cell, you connect using a straight line. That's a cell. You connect to a bulb. Then from a bulb, you connect to a switch. From another switch, you complete the circuit. So this is what we call a symbol circuit, whereby you are connecting the components using in a symbol circuit. Now in our circuit that we have, What we have just used, here we have the symbols that, I, I, that you see now. When you look at our, our circuit, we don't, for example, when you look at a cell, if somebody is drawing a cell, most cells look like that. So when you start connecting cells like this, and then you have a bulb, I don't know if your bulb will look like this, then you have a as a, 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 a switch some switches are as big as this and then we have some wires so you see this one looks ugly instead of doing this what we normally do we use symbols for example when you draw a symbol of a cell you draw a very big stick and a small stick this one they represent a cell in that the bigger one is the positive and the smaller one is the negative that is now a cell when you have several cells we call them a battery for example I can have one cell another cell another cell another cell several cells when you connect several cells, now we say that is a battery. Because a battery has a voltage of around 12, 6. So when you have several cells, it means we are having a battery. Then a switch, a switch, remember, is a bridge where electrons can be stopped and can also 
go through a switch. Now, in this switch of ours, we represent a switch by drawing some lines. You draw a line. Let me just draw for you a switch. You draw a line, and then this line is not complete. There is a gap. Such that if you want to switch on, you close it. Now we can say the switch is on. But when you it is open, no current will pass. So this is off. So this we call it a switch. Then when we draw a lamp, a lamp we present by a circle and then we have a lamp inside or a circle and then we have a cross that we mean is the circle somebody is saying a ski chochote maybe is it for everybody are you not getting my voice Somebody is saying that a siki chochote. Let me just confirm the voice. Are you getting my voice? You can type. If you're not getting my voice, are you getting the voice? Who's that not getting the voice? Oh, I've seen Fatma, I know why. Your audio is as a problem, Fatma. You have a problem with your audio? Fatma Anasema Aski Chochote. Yes, Fatma. It is your audio. Even from here, I'm seeing there's a problem to your audio. I don't know how I will help you. Fatima, there is a problem with your audio. Please. You can get off the my the, the earphones. Try to get off the earphones. Maybe you are using earphones and they are not uh, synchronized well. So take off the earphones, Fatima. Now let us continue as Fatima is trying to sort out. Then we have when we we are now using the where we connect. Sometimes you connect a wire, you connect another wire, connect a wire and a wire. So sometimes you may have wires crossing each other. So what we do, whenever wires cross, sometimes wires can cross in two ways. One way, a wire can cross each other and the two wires are not connected. So when they are not connected, we just cross them. But if we have a wire and it's connect another one, we put a connector, we shade, we put a dot. When we put this dot, we mean that the two wires are connected. So, so sometimes we have two wires connected and two wires not connected. So you look at where there's a dot here. So it's the dot which tells us whether the wires are connected or not connected. In physics, we have what we call a resistor. A resistor is a component which tries to degrade the amount of current that is passing. So these resistors, we draw them using a box, and then we draw another one. This is the symbol for a resistor. We have two types of resistors. We have a resistor that is fixed and a resistor that is variable. A resistor that is, is variable we, are, we draw this and then we put an arrow at the center to show that it is a variable resistor. 
we also have uh, what we call a fuse. A fuse it's drawn by a smaller box and a wire passing inside. We call that one a fuse. We have a capacitor. A capacitor is almost it has the same as the cell, but the difference is the two sticks are the same height. For example, when I draw a cell, I've told you, you draw one long stick and a shorter one. The long one is the positive, the short one is the negative. And this is now our cell. But when you draw a capacitor, you draw both sticks are of the same height. So when the two sticks are of the same height, one is the positive, another one is the negative, but they are the same height, we call it a capacitor. So do not confuse a capacitor and a cell. This is a cell where the longer one is the positive, the shorter one is the negative. And here, both of them are of the same length, and that's called a capacitor. We also have what we call as a rheostat. I'm going to show you what are they, a rheostat, whereby we have the wires that are continuous. But now, here we have the arrow coming from above, the arrow for a rheostat. In physics, we have a gadget which we use to measure the current. We call it the ammeter. The ammeter, we draw a circle, and we draw A inside this is an ammeter, a symbol for an ammeter. We have another one we use to measure voltage. We draw a circle and we draw V, the symbol for this is a, vo a, a voltimeter. Unless gas you have a question, those are the symbols. The last one, let me draw the last one. We have a, galano a, a galvanometer whereby it has a G inside, a galvanometer. Those are the symbols we use in physics. So whenever we draw, we normally refer to those symbols. The next uh, part after looking at these symbols, electric current flows through the conductor. And that's what exactly we have shown. We have two types of circuits. One is called a closed circuit. A closed circuit is the one which here the switch is complete. Let me draw another one. Draw another circuit here. We have a cell. Then we have a line, a, a wire. We draw an ammeter. We connect this ammeter to a switch. We draw a lamp. Then we connect this one. Now, here, let us know that the switch is on. We close it. Now, in this case, it's a circuit which the flow of current, there is a flow of current. So this one is called an open circuit because here, because the switch is open, this is called an open circuit. This is because it is closed, we call it a closed circuit. We have two types of circuit, a closed and an open circuit. A closed circuit and open circuit. A closed, it means electrons can flow. An open, it means electrons cannot flow. So that's the difference between an open circuit and a closed circuit. Unless you have a question, uh, I'm going to, to show you 
it across is a circuit where there's a flow of electric current and then you can see it the bulb will light in a closed one but an open one for example this is the closed one you see there's no gap there's no switch that is there but if we go to the opens so an open there's no flow of current you see the switch was open so whenever you see the switch you look at the switch if the switch is open that is an open circuit and if now you have the switch and the switch is closed this is a closed this one there is flow of current here there's no flow of current therefore we say an open circuit there is no flow of electric current it is caused by open switch whereby there's loose connection so when you go to your room to sleep and you switch off the lights you have opened the circuit when you wake up in the morning you switch it on to see you have closed the circuit so when you go to, to switch on it means i'm going to close the circuit when you switch off we mean you are going to either open or close the circuit. that's the difference girls now we go to the second uh, uh, our activity so you see now this is an open circuit why is it open the reason why we call this open because look at the switch the switch here it is open there is a gap here therefore we say this is an open circuit is there a question up to that point any question girls any question before i proceed okay no question it means i proceed Is there anybody who is okay? Let me switch one. This one off. And this one off. Okay. Somebody is uh, typing. Let me see what is being typed here. Mm, okay. I think Fatima, now you can hear us. That's very good. Now everybody can take us through. Now we go back to our notes. Go back to our notes. So we look at uh, now we have also what we have a short circuit, the third type of a circuit. Now it is a circuit whereby the current takes the part with the lower resistance, thus bypasses the electric component. It can be caused by conducting wires coming in contact with each other. Let me demonstrate that one. When you have a short circuit, let's say, let me bring my biro here. If you have this is your circuit. This is your AC, your ammeter. This is your bulb. And this is your switch. Now, if that is your connection, you have your open switch, open circuit, I mean. If this switch is closed, and now we can say we have a closed switch, and somebody by mistake comes and connects these wires by mistake. Now we have 10 minutes, girls. If this time runs, I will send you another link very fast. So we have 10 minutes. If, if we there's a problem, we are going to, I'm going to send you another link. So don't go away if this class ends abruptly. Now, if somebody comes by mistake and they connects a wire, let's say here, or these wires by mistake, they connect each other. This circuit, we say it as a short circuit. By this, 
these wires can burn. This what this is the most common accident in our houses when we hear people saying the fire was caused by wires. When wires by mistake come into contact, by not when we talk about the the Lord, the component is these wires do not pass through the bulb. Let's say it is your TV. The wires do not pass through your TV. They just short. They bypass. Bypass is that they follow a shortcut. When they for a shortcut, we say that is a short circuit. So I've talked about three types of circuits. An open circuit, a short circuit, and a closed circuit. Now we go, we continue with the discussion unless there is a, a, a question. If there is a question, just raise up your hand or type, I will see and respond. Then we have what called an electric current. What is an electric current? It is the rate of flow of charges. Actually, girls, when we talk of current, let's say this is our conductor. Our, our conductor always has electrons on it. We have electrons on the conductor. If these electrons flow, we say that is electric current. Now, the rate of flow, whenever we talk of the rate, we mean the time they take. If we time them and say we have a certain number of electrons which will pass in a certain period of time, that becomes an electric current. So current is the electrons. So the rate at which they flow, we call it the rate. Remember, electrons contain charges. So when we say it is the rate of flow of charges. Charges, we mean electrons. So when you talk the rate, we mean time. Meaning, the formula for finding current, it is charge divided by time. Remember, charge is given by C. Because charges are measured by, in terms of coulombs. I'm going to explain it later. And then, Time is measured in seconds. And the SI unit for current is ambience. That is capital A. So, but the symbol for current is capital I. The symbol for time is small t. And the symbol for charge is capital Q. Therefore, if I'm writing the formula for current is capital I, current is equal to charge, which is capital Q, divided by time, which is small t. So the SI unit is amperes, capital A. That's how we can define an electric current. We go to the next part. That's what I've shown you, that this means the SI unit for current is coulombs per second, which is amphias. An example, we can do an example. Calculate the amount of current flowing through a bulb if the coulombs of charge is 2.5 minutes. Now, I've said we want to get the current. So I will say current which is I, is equal to charge, which is Q, divided by time, which is T. Now, in this case, our charge is 300 coulombs. So, I would just say 300 coulombs. Divided by time. Remember, this time is in minutes. Our time has been a second. So to change 2.5 into seconds, we multiply by 60, which will give us 100, I think, and 50. 150 seconds. So divide by 150. This will give us 2. And the SI unit for this one is amphias. So we have 
calculate the current which is I equal Q divided by T. That is it. That current is charge over time. The charge is 300 coulombs. And then we convert 2.5 minutes into seconds by multiplying by 60. And then we find 2 amphias. Now, we go to the next uh, part, which is called the electromotive force. Before we, I explain uh, the electromotive force, allow me to, uh, ex to give you an example of what we call an electro and a potential difference. Let me give you a scenario. Back at home, we have water in our boreholes. But that water in the boreholes, let's say this is your home. I like using example. If this is your home, this is your house, and then here you have water in a borehole. This is the water. Do you, if you don't have a pump to bring, to pump that water from the borehole to your house, you can die of thirst because yes, somebody can say you have water in your compound, but you don't have the pump to bring you water up to your house. So you cannot say because I have water, I have, I have the well, I have water. Having water is different from accessing it. So in this case, I mean, if we say this is a wire and the wire has electrons, and then we connect this wire to a bulb. This wire, it cannot light this bulb. Because it's like saying, this person has water and has a well. But this person needs a pump to pump water from the well to the house. So the water is there. The water cannot come by itself. The water must be forced to your house using a pump. The same case, these electrons, we have divine electron is the flow. We need these electrons to flow to the bulb. But who is going to make them flow? We need a pump. That's why we need a cell. So when we put a cell, the work of a cell is to act like a pump, to force the electrons to come here. So this, the electrons are already present in the conductor. We need a pump, which is a cell, to force them. That's why now in this subtopic, you see how we say electromotive force. We need a force. We need a force. A, we normally call it an EMF. EMF, electromotive force. And the potential difference, PD. We need these two to make electrons to flow. And that these two can only be given if we use the cell. Now, let us look at what they are saying. This voltage across a cell connecting an open circuit. This means the cell is not supplying. So it means if I'm having a cell and the switch is open, the switch is open, Here we have a bulb. We call this switch, this circuit open. When the switch is open, we say the voltage across here is an EMF because it's not assisting us anything. It cannot make the bulb to light. So an EMF is the voltage across a cell connected in an open circuit. This means the cell is not referring. Somebody wants to, uh, to end. It means it's not referring. That's what we call. But if we close the circuit, it changes to a PD. 